If you're teaching a math class or a science class or even a business class or any other class on Canvas where you need to be using numbers and have students calculate things but you don't want to make so many different versions of things with different numbers, Canvas can do that for you with the formula questions feature. So I'll give a generic overview with some um, different examples. Click a new question and then for this you're going to click a formula question. So we can type in a formula with real numbers. So something like what is the current in amps in a light bulb with a resistance of 100 ohms. We'll do it the ohms part later. And a power of 120 watts. So we are going to put ohms in here. We can do that by going to the insert math equation, Greek, and this is ohm. So the equation for this, if you care to know it, power is equal to the current squared times the resistance. So we want students to solve for i, which means they're going to divide both sides by r and then take the square root to get i. That means that you have to put that into it as well. Now, of course, we don't want students to all have 100 ohms as the resistance. And we don't want all students to have 120 watts as the power. So to create a variable, you put that variable in brackets. You can put anything you want in terms of what the variable is. I could write out the word resistance, but I prefer to keep them shorter. So I'm using capital R and capital P. It is sensitive to capitals. Sometimes you have to click off to get it to load. So we want students to calculate the current. The way that you would do that in this case, and I guess I'll step in and say that the R and the P will be replaced by numbers of your specification. So what that looks like is that say you want the resistance to be between 70 and 100 ohms. And then you want the power to be between 115 watts and 140 watts. It's going to give you values that fall in that range. Those are just example values. You can add decimal points if you want. Just keep in mind that Canvas does not do sig figs. So for the formula, we want the square root of P divided by R. So to do square root, you can do SQRT, and then you can just do P divided by R, save it. And that gives us a number that's a little bit too inexact. So you do want to probably add some decimal points or decimal places after the decimal point. Recompute and always verify that your uh, math is correct. So square root of p over r, we keep recomputing and we're going to get lots of numbers that fall into the range that we specify. So to actually create those different values here, what we're going to do and actually create like different um, potential questions for students, I should say, is you want to generate, oftentimes, as many different values as you can so that everyone or most people get a different number or a different question. So if you have 30 students, you might want to generate 30 different values. Sometimes it's not possible to generate as many values as you want that are unique if you have very narrow ranges up here. Also, you're going to want to oftentimes put a tolerance for error or the error margin. Um, as it can be absolute or it can be a percentage. In this case, I'm using a percentage, 1%. Um, Sometimes 1% or 2% is appropriate. 0% is a little bit tricky because if students aren't exact based on the specifications and the problem here, then they'll get it wrong. And that can happen due to rounding error. So then we generate. It's going to generate those 30. We're going to go down, update question, save, and then you can preview. And when we look at this question here, we have a resistance of 83. A power of 128 and it is case sensitive on the back end so as you saw I use capital R and capital P I could have used anything but if a student were to do this question they would take the power 128 divide it by the resistance which is 83 take the square root of that and that would be their answer so there's another thing that you can do with this as you'll see is if we create a new question you can use 
these variables in other locations. So if you want to put a table in here, for example, say a 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three table, you can resize it. Um, heading 1, and then you have 2, and then 3. And let's say you have A and B, who knows. You can have variables populate in here as well. So if you want that one to be cars, this one to be trains, X, Y, Z, those are going to pop up once you go, of course, down to formula question. And you can use these in all sorts of ways, as you'll see throughout some of the other um, videos in the playlist. What you should be familiar with is the fact that those different functions that you can use are greater than just what you see here. So if we create another question, go to questions and find a new one. I'll actually take this original question I'd already created. That means that if we put this in here, you can add functions to this. So in the other one, we did square root. Now in this case, it says in meters per second, let's get this into the right type of question. In meters per second, what is the speed of a bicyclist who takes a certain amount of minutes to travel a certain amount of meters. Our two variables here are t for minutes, I just put that in there for time, and then d for distance, which is going to be measured in meters. So we want our students to put the answer in meters per second. Remember that they can only put in numbers, not units. So when they're answering in meters per second, and you're explicitly saying meters per second here, then you have to code it in correctly or they'll be wrong. So let's say we want our time to be between one minute and four minutes. And we want our distance to be between 1,000 meters and let's say 2,000 meters. So it's going to show you different values that meet your specifications here. So two minutes and then 1664 for meters and XYZ. Down here, if you do speed equals distance over time, we know that distance over time is equal to speed. If you do D over T, using our two variables here, and save it, you'll get an answer that's incorrect because your time that you're using is minutes, but you want students to have it in seconds. So you need to take care of that in the formula here. Distance divided by time, but we want our time in seconds. To turn minutes into seconds, you multiply by 60. So t times 60 in parentheses in the denominator, that actually gives us our answer here. So we can add another decimal point. I recommend you add uh, typically one or two decimal points because too much rounding will create wrong answers. And unfortunately, Canvas does not do sig figs. So just recompute a bunch of times just to see if it works. By hand, double check to make sure your formula makes sense. In this case, it's pretty obvious. But when they get more expansive, what you don't want to do is have an incorrect formula and then a bunch of emails saying, I thought I did this right, what happened? And it's all because of what you did not do correctly in the back end. The important part, again, is to generate a certain number of solutions. So let's say we generate 50, and we want a 2% margin of error on either side. We can generate those. Those are going to be generated. You see all the possible ones. And then you can click Update Question, and then Save, Preview, and you can see the questions here, and I already made this question earlier, but these two questions have different numbers because it's randomly generated each time. So that's an overview of how formula questions work.